So this is the area I've chosen to uh, construct my shelter. Two large rocks either side. As you can see in the distance there is a multitude of fairly straight, long, thin saplings, both dead standing and green for me to construct a shelter with. Directly above me is a uh, slightly dead tree there, but that's a good 15 metres away from there. Um, and there's no dead overhanging gum trees at all in that area. As well as we've got this one down here, which will make a great workbench. And we'll harvest some of the wood off the end there. So yeah, I'll uh, bring you back in a minute. Rightio guys. This is the basic structure. We've got one fairly clean, solid, straight ridge pole. We've got the tripods. I actually played around with the configuration a little bit and decided to cut them up a lot shorter. Originally they were about this tall. Uh, a couple of reasons. A, it would just take up too much material. Um, and B, it'll, I've checked the weather report. It's actually going to get fairly cold around here tonight. So I want to make a smaller shelter. It's easier to heat up. It's easier to keep that heat um, instead of like this, this large area. So what I've got is, I've actually been lucky enough to find a lot of um, hollowed out logs that I've been able to split and I'll have them basically kind of like shingles down a roof um, running down the back there. Obviously I've got this rock in the way, it's not a huge issue. Um, I'm actually going to use that as a bit of a, a table inside there so I'm kind of working with the environment that I've got. And I've also got this one here. Sometimes I don't put them at the front, but with this one, because of the, the, the weight of the timber that's going to be pushing on it, just a bit of extra support, one going down the front. And um, I'll clean this up and I'll, I'll probably use this uh, V-notch as well. I always like to keep, you know, if you've got things like this on there, keep them on until you need to trim them off. Um, if they're going to be an issue where you'll get hooked up and jagged on, then yeah, definitely cut them off. If not, then you never know, down the track you can sort of work with it, a place to hang your, your pack or something like that. But anyway guys, I'll um, do a bit more and then I'll show you then. Cheers. So this is the basis of the shelter. Like I said, we've got these sort of rotted out logs that we've been able to split and cut down fairly cleanly and they'll basically take up the, the majority of that space there. What I'm going to do on the back of it is there's plenty of this wild grass growing around here. I've actually had to pull out some clumps while I've been working. It's quite, quite thick and it sheds water quite well. So what we're going to do is start from the bottom. I'm going to layer it with the roots facing up so when the water hits it, it wants to run off. And the next layer will go on like so and then so on and so on, all the way up to the top. So it'll shed water off quite quickly, as well as it's a fairly sharp pitch as well, so it'll run off very quickly. It sort of won't sink through it. Um, unfortunately, ordinarily, I'd probably use Malaluca bark, paper bark. Um, there's just not enough of it around here, and for this exercise, I don't want to denude the, um, the few trees that are around here. There's no point in damaging them. If they're older trees and they were shedding a, a lot of bark, then yes, no dramas at all. Um, but it's about looking after your environment. So, um, cool. I'll get back to it. Have a good one. Well, here's the, uh, the basis of the shelter. It did start to rain before, so I tucked everything away and got the old dry zone out. And I uh, quickly put it over the camera so it didn't get too wet, but yeah, it's all cleared up now. Right, we've done the thatching, we've got the grass, and then we've also got another layer. I'll, sh I'll um, post some photos of the back as well, or, or, or um, do a walk around in a minute with the camera. 
Uh, but basically we've got uh, other branches on there holding the, the, the grass down, making sure it doesn't sort of blow away or anything like that. Um, you will see a little bit of light down the bottom. I'm not overly worried about that because that'll still let a little bit of air flow through there. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not an issue where we are here. We've got logs at the back there uh, that will actually stop that, that I'll sort of move in later on. But yeah, that's, uh, this is the shelter for the night and I'm gonna do a bit of a uh, bit of friction fire and um, yeah, have a cuppa, have a feed and we really sweet. All right, thanks heaps guys. So, time for a cuppa. We've got the shelter up behind us. Gone through, I've collected the timber. We've got some, lucky enough that we've got a cabbage palm down there. So, I was able to scrape some of the fine fibres off him and a little bit of paper bark as well. And then a bit of grass in the nest. I've got a um, mulberry, um, spindle and a western red cedar pathboard with deer antler bearing block as always preparation is the key fine materials birds nest we've got some very fine leafy bark there thin twigs moving up to slightly thicker twigs right up to large pencil or finger thickness and then onto our split timber. It's been raining here, it's been really wet, so we'll, we'll see how we go. Like everything, preparation is the key. Get good technique, get yourself nice and set, in a good position. Warm up the board. start to see a little bit of smoke, those few whiffs, a little bit more pressure, nice even long strokes. Oh, slipping a bit there. Make sure you build up plenty of ember there. Now the ember is still smoking, so that's good. No joy. Right, so we started with the bow drill and I've done it about half a dozen times now and we've got up to the smoke and we've got up to the ember and the ember just won't hold. So I don't know whether my board's too wet or whether it's just too damp here. Um, it did rain quite heavily last night and some of the materials that I'm using did get um, slightly wet, so it could be that. But like everything, we always have a backup for a backup. So um, failing the bow drill, I've got the fire flint. Let's give that a crack.
So even that took a little bit of an effort. Right yeah, guys, I'll um, build this up, I'll boil the kettle up, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.